Welcome back, everybody, to the Baltimore Orioles franchise here on MLB The Show 21. Today we have games three and four of the ALCS, a major opportunity for us or the Astros to really take command of this series as we inch closer and closer to the World Series. We split the first two games in Baltimore as we won game one 5 nothing and lost game two 5-3. to three. So that sets us up in a pivotal stretch on the road in Houston and a real opportunity for our team to clinch a World Series or at least get in position to clinch a World Series within the final two games at home. We have a very interesting decision pitching-wise. This would be Max Meyer's scheduled start, but Shane Bieber does have full energy. If this series were to go seven games and the Orioles would probably want Bieber on for game seven, then their best bet of having him ready for that game would be to pitch him today rather than later. So certainly some interesting storylines here as we approach game number three. A pivotal opportunity for both of these teams to lean the momentum towards their way because in the first two games, there wasn't really a whole lot of momentum. Both offenses have struggled up to this point. The Orioles have scored eight runs in two games, which is not a bad mark by any stretch, but it feels like their offense has not been able to get a whole lot going, and same can be said for the Astros, who got shut out in game one and struggled early in game two before going on a nice run late in route to victory. So the next three games are all here in Houston, a major opportunity for the Astros to get some momentum at home, but assuming this series does go to a sixth or seventh game, both of them would be in Baltimore. Shane Bieber is warming up for the Orioles, so that kind of reveals who is starting as we look at the playoff bracket. The National League series appears to be over. After winning Game 1, the Diamondbacks have lost three in a row, so the defending champion Braves look to be poised to get back to the World Series for a second straight season. Here's a look at both lineups, regular starters for each team, as it'll be Lance McCullers on the bump. For the Astros, he's been a great middle of the rotation guy for Houston for quite a while now. Had a good first postseason start, which was the deciding game three in the ALDS, leading to a Houston sweep over Detroit. We'll see what he can do today against a very talented Baltimore lineup. Here's Jalen Miller, who's been the unsung hero of this postseason. Goes down looking on the high knuckle curve. That pitch was a little bit outside, but really placed perfectly by McCullers. So here's Shane Bieber, his third postseason start. Statistically, wasn't great in the first two, particularly game five of the previous series in which he allowed four runs in five innings. But if you watch that game, you know how well he pitched. And had it not been for a few defensive blunders, Bieber would have been on pace to go six or seven scoreless. So I think he's pitched a lot better than that ERA would tell you. Jordan Alvarez gets fooled on the inside slider. I believe the count was full there. So a nasty pitch from Shane Bieber. Both pitchers retire the sides as we go to the second. Nick Castellanos up. He strikes out on the knuckle curve. Castellanos struggled early in the postseason, but he has been on fire the past four games or so. Into the bottom of the second. Austin Wells is up. Grounds this one past Shed Lawn for a base hit. The first base runner of the entire game for either team. It has definitely been a pitcher's duel thus far. And now Houston has a man aboard here for Corey Lee. Grounds it to the exact same spot. What a play! Shed Lawn with an awesome diving grab to end the inning. Lawn showing off that great glove he has. Excellent, excellent play there by Shed Lawn. One of the best defensive plays of the postseason here for Baltimore. Game remains tied at zero as we enter the third. Look who's leading off. It's Shed Lawn coming off that great defensive play. He draws a walk. So not only does he end the previous inning, but he is also Baltimore's first base runner of the game. That'll bring up Carmen Sexto, singled into right. And the Orioles have a pair of runners on with nobody out. What an opportunity right here for the Orioles to break this game open. That'll bring up Xavier Bowman, who's been hot and cold so far in the playoffs. Grounds it right to short, flips it to Altuve over to first. It's a 6-4-3 double play. The runner does advance to third, but still what I would call a wasted opportunity possibly, unless Adley Rutschman comes up clutch as that one bounces fair into left field. The throw to second is in time. So they got Adley Rutschman out, but the Orioles do score a run. So it is one to nothing after the RBI single by 
Adley Rutschman after a very close play there at second base. We go to the bottom of the third. J.P. Crawford is up. Hits it nicely in the left. Should be caught by St. John. What the hell was that? Lewis St. John nearly blew game five the past series due to poor defense. Makes another mistake there. He was the MVP of the American League, so no, you cannot bench him because he's too good offensively. <laughs> but god damn, that's brutal. So Houston has themselves a base runner. Will they capitalize? It does not look like it. Brandon Nimmo grounds it to second. Juan flips it over to Jalen Miller. So the dumb error by Lewis St. John will not haunt Shane Bieber's performance, unlike game five of the previous series. As we go to the top of a fourth now. Big dig. Lenny Ling with a bomb. In a straightaway center field. Go ball, go. It's out of here. Solo home run for Lenny Ling, his third of the postseason. Lenny Ling has not performed up to standards in the playoffs, but he has played a little bit better in this series, and if he can heat up, then I don't know if this lineup can be stopped. Kyle Tucker with two away in the bottom of the fourth, singles it into left field. Lewis St. John does field that one cleanly, but it already was on the ground. So Tucker is now aboard. The Astros have a nice opportunity here for Austin Wells, and he goes down looking on the inside fastball. Four scoreless for Shane Bieber, who is looking dominant as ever, just like that game five against the Angels, but hopefully the fifth inning doesn't go south like that game five. J.P. Crawford is up here in the bottom of the fifth, two away. Hits it nicely into center. It will drop for a hit. So the Astros have a runner aboard. We'll see if this is the inning where their offense can finally do something as they have continued to struggle against this pitching staff throughout this series. Altuve goes down on the slider, make it five scoreless frames for Shane Bieber, and the Astros have no answer for him. Lance McCullers is also quietly having a great game as he strikes out Jalen Miller. Both teams only have three hits so far. All the attention has gone on Bieber because of the shutout, but Lance McCullers Jr. has pitched outstandingly as well. Into the bottom of the six. Brandon Nemo leads it off. And Nemo hits a bomb. Oppo Poppo. And the Astros are going to bring you within one. A solo home run for Nemo. His first to the playoffs. 369. Nice. Feet. And the Astros cut the lead in half. Houston needed that one badly. It was about time their offense did something productive. And now they're right back in the game. Only down by one run. That'll bring up the best hitter in this lineup. You're Don Alvarez. Count is 3-1. Alvarez hits a nuke in the right center. This game is tied at two. Back-to-back -back home runs for the Astros, whose offense did nothing in the first five innings. And now they start the sixth with a pair of blasts. A 433-foot bomb for your Don Alvarez. And I think the Orioles know a pitching change is needed. Again, just like his previous performance, Shane Bieber was on fire, but it slipped away late, and he's going to be taken out of the game. Still a very solid performance by Bieber, but it's certainly going to be hampered by those two home runs by Nemo and Alvarez. Amir Garrett will enter in his place. Garrett pitched two innings in game one of this series, didn't allow a run. He had an underwhelming regular season, but I just have a weird confidence about him going into the postseason, and his first outing looked very promising. First batter is Alex Bregman, singles it in the left. So the Astros have started this inning with three consecutive hits. In the first five innings of the game, they recorded three hits. So they have doubled their hit total within the span of three batters. Impressive. Austin Wells draws a walk with one away. And look at the Astros' offense. They are all of a sudden starting to click. That'll bring up Corey Lee, who hits this one high. Deep in the left field. Will it stay fair? No. 2.2 feet foul. A huge break there for the Orioles. Following pitch is fouled off to the right, but the bigger thing here is Amir Garrett gets injured. So he will have to be taken out of the game. He's clutching his oblique. So his day is done, and Cosmo Cruz will enter. Cruz is a 13.5 ERA so far in the postseason. He was excellent as a rookie in the regular season, but so far in the playoffs has struggled. Hasn't pitched yet in this series. We'll see if he can get out of the jam as the Astros have two aboard. Count is now full for Lee, and he goes down luck on the inside slider. A nasty pitch there by Cosmo Cruz to get out of the inning. And now Houston's going to need a base hit here from Jeff McNeil, and I don't think that's going to happen. A fly out into left, caught by Lewis St. John. 
So credit there to Cosmo Cruz for getting out of the jam. Amir Garrett was all right, too. He wasn't great. He did allow a couple base runners. But the Astros tied at two after back-to-back -back home runs to start the inning by Nimmo and Alvarez. The Astros make a pitching change of their own. It'll be Josh James who enters for Lance McCullers. I'm surprised McCullers was taken out. I thought he was really catching his stride. Leading the inning off is Big Dang Lenny Ling with a mood shot in the right. This one will stay fair, and the Orioles take the lead right back. Lenny Lane with his second home run in as many at bats, 369. Nice feat. And the Baltimore Orioles are right back on top as it's now 3-2. to two. Great work by the 39-year-old Lenny Lane who tied his teammate Louis St. John with 55 home runs to lead the majors. And Lenny Lane's power is really starting to show up. One away for Castellanos, hits it into center, and it's going to drop. Now the Orioles lineup is starting to figure some things out. They've had a rough day as well, but two hits within the span of three at-bats ain't too bad. That'll bring you up Shed Lawn, one-two pitch. Hits this one high, but it looks like it will be caught in center. Shed Lawn has really struggled offensively the past four or five games. He was on fire to start the postseason, but the past like four or five games, he has just been not good. The reliable righty Julian Starnes checks in in the bottom of the seventh. Starnes has been Baltimore's best reliever in the postseason. Hasn't allowed a run in nearly five innings of work as he faces off against J.P. Crawford to lead the inning off. Grounded to third. The throw from Mel Kessel is way offline. Over the head of Carmen Sixto. So not only does Crawford reach base, but because that went out of play, he goes to second. The next batter, Jose Altuve, hits this one into deep left center. Crawford scores easily. An RBI double for Jose Altuve, and this game is tied up at three. That run doesn't score if not for the error, so it's not an earned run against Julian Starnes. With one away, it's a fly out into left field. Should be caught by Louis St. John, but the Astros will get the sacrifice to score, so Houston leads. And again, had it been for the error, that would have been the third out of the inning. So it's another run, not against Julian Starnes, but against Ryan Mountcastle. Alex Bregman is now up with two away. Hits it into right past Castellanos. That one looks like it'll be a double. And although Julian Starnes is not technically allowed an earned run this inning, he also has not pitched all that well, allowing quite a few extra base hits. Kyle Tucker goes down on the curveball, so that'll end the seventh. Both teams score in this inning, but the Astros own their first lead of the game, 4-3, to three, with just two innings to go. We'll see if Baltimore can come back or if Houston will hold on for a pivotal Game 3 victory. Nick Anderson is in here in the 8th. Anderson started this postseason as the team's closer, but it seems like that role is switched over to James Karinchak, who I imagine is warming up for the ninth inning. With two away, Adley Rutschman grounds into second, fielded by Altuve. A 1-2-3 inning goes down the Oriole lineup, and the Astros are now fully in the driver's seat with the lead going into the bottom of the eighth inning. We'll see if they can hold on here, and that starts with making this one a little bit more comfortable towards them in the bottom half of the inning. Bruce Dark Ratterall will be on the mound for the Orioles. He has been kind of disappointing in the playoffs after pitching at an elite level of a regular season as the Astros do get a base hit there with one away. A single for Corey Lee, who's had a pretty good game today. That'll bring up Jeff McNeil with a bomb in the right field, and I think that might be the dagger. Two-run shot for McNeil, and this one is a three-run game in favor of the Astros. McNeil with his second home run in the playoffs. And now Baltimore is in a lot of trouble. The struggles for Gratterall will continue as Jose Altuve with two away hits it into right. The throw to second from Castellanos is just not in time. It was a good throw, but Altuve was able to beat it out by split seconds. Brandon Nemo goes down looking on the changeup, so that'll end the eighth inning. The Astros add two more to their name. They lead this one comfortably 6-3 to three with one inning to go. It will be James Karinchak in for the save, one for one in save ops this postseason. That was in game two. Jalen Miller has the fastball blow right by him for strike three. Karinchak is a master of strikeouts, one of the best K-9 pitchers in all of baseball, starter or reliever. Lenny Lane draws a walk, so does not hit another home run, but he does reach base, a successful A-B nonetheless. Now the final hope for Baltimore is Nick Castellanos. 2-1 pitch, bloops it into right. This one is going to drop. So Castellanos singles, Lane advances to second, 
Two on, two out. Tying run is up to bat. It's Ryan Mountcastle, who is 0 for 3 today, but has performed well in the postseason. Pops it up, slams his bat in frustration, and the Astros win game three by the final score of 6 to 3. So Houston now leads the series 2 to 1 after getting shut out in game one. The Astros have responded with a pair of big wins. Our offense just was not great. Other than the two home runs by Lenny Ling, the offense did virtually nothing. I thought our pitching was good. Shane Bieber was very solid. Julian Starnes, although he got the loss, he didn't pitch that poorly and, quite frankly, doesn't really deserve the loss. As for Houston, their offense really struggled early, but they scored two in the sixth, two in the seventh, two in the eighth, and that's how they ended up winning this game. Amir Garrett does, in fact, stuffer a strain oblique. He's going to be out for a couple days. So, not ideal, but I guess not the end of the world. That brings us to a huge game four that the Orioles cannot lose. They did win three straight in the ALDS after being down 2 0. But I imagine Baltimore does not want to go down 3 1 and does not want to be in a sticky situation in which they would have to win the final three games of the series in order to advance to the World Series. It's an overcast day, not a lot of rain projected, but still murky skies nonetheless, but the stadium roof is going to be open, which is interesting. It was overcast last night, but the stadium was closed. As you can see here in the bracket, the Braves have won game five, so for a second straight season, they will be representing the National League in the World Series. Again, regular lineups for the most part. Christian Robinson and Yermeen Mercedes both getting starts today for the O's. As starting for Houston will be former Oriole Corbin Burns, who was on the team last year, signed as a free agent in the offseason, and he was all right. His ratings actually regressed quite a lot, so we kind of dodged a bullet by not signing him, but he's been pretty good for the Strohs as he gets Castellanos to go down on the outside cutter. That was not a particularly good pitch to swing at. One, two, three inning there for Corbin Burns, and we go to the bottom of the first as we take a look at Max Meyer, who, in my opinion, saved the series in the ALDS. The Orioles were down 2 nothing. He got the start. He pitched damn good, which gave Baltimore momentum to win the rest of that series. We'll see how he pitches today, and he kind of needs to save this series as well. Yordan Alvarez goes down on the outside changeup, so Max Meyer retires the side as well. Good start for both pitchers. Into the second inning, Shen Long nearly hits Burns. It is caught by J.P. Crawford on the line drive. So just like the last game, both teams are slow to really get anything going offensively as there's still not been any base runners for either side. In the bottom of the second, Kyle Tucker is up to two pitch. Filthy fastball in the outside corner of the plate for Max Meyer. It has been so fun to see Meyer finally tap into his potential this season after looking like a bust early in his career. Austin Wells then grounds it to short, fielded cleanly for the third out of the inning. A couple 1-2-3 innings for Meyer to start the game, and both pitchers have been perfect through two. Christian Robinson going to look to change that here in the top of the third, and that's exactly what he's going to do. A single into right field for Robinson, and with one out, the Orioles finally have a base runner. We'll see if they can do anything with it. Yermin Mercedes is now up, and he's going to go down on the cutter. Mercedes has not gotten a ton of playing time in the postseason, but if he performed well today, that could change that. Ryan Mountcastle hitting the leadoff despite going 0 for 4 in the last game. Singles it into center field for a base knock. So Mountcastle now gets two runners on, two out. A huge at bat here for Lewis St. John, who has really struggled so far in this series. Hits it nicely to short. Crawford flips it to Altuve. No score through the top of the third inning. The Orioles did finally get some base runners, but were not able to drive anybody across. Into the bottom of the third, Corey Lee goes down on the ripping 99-mile-an-hour fastball. Max Meyer showing off the chin music as we enter the fourth. Meyer still perfect through three. Ali Rutschman, weak grounder to second, fielded by Altuve. And what a start to this game for Corbin Burns against his old team. This is definitely a revenge game for Burns, and he has looked the part. Jose Altuve leads off the bottom of the fourth, goes down on the outside slider. So Max Meyer has taken this perfect game into the fourth inning. Will it last much longer? No, you're done, Alvarez draws a walk. The no-hitter is still alive, I suppose, but Alvarez is now aboard and an opportunity for Alex Brakeman to make some noise as he hits it into right, caught by Castellanos, and that will end the inning. Through four, no score. Orioles zero, Astros zero. Max Meyer still with a no-hitter well and alive. Shen Long with a big swing and a miss on the curveball. 
a filthy pitch by Corbin Burns, and the offensive struggles continue for the Orioles, who still have not hit the ball well in this series at all. Christian Robinson is now up. Grounds it to short, fielded by Crawford. That is four one, two, three innings in this game for Corbin Burns. And other than the third inning, in which he allowed a couple base hits, Burns has been pretty much perfect. Corey Lee up in the bottom of the fifth, singles it into center. The no-hitter, unfortunately, dead for Meyer, but I suppose the shutout is still alive, and obviously the same thing can be said for Corbin Burns. That'll bring up Jeff McNeil, hits it into left. That one will drop. Lewis St. John is lollygagging out there in the outfield as he trips running into the wall. Run scores, and we finally have points on the board. An RBI double for Jeff McNeil, and the Astros lead this game 1-0. Into the sixth inning, Corbin Burns, of course, still in as he faces off against Ryan Mountcastle. Lines it to third. Nice grab by Alex Brakeman, showing off the reflexes for the second out of the inning. That'll bring up Lewis St. John. Does not have a hit in today's episode. This will be a big time to change that as he lines it down the right field line and fair. Lewis St. John headed to second. The throw is going to only go to the cutoff, man, so there was never a throw to second. A big double for Lewis St. John and a big opportunity for Nick Castellanos to drive in a run. This one is weakly grounded. Pass the glove of Crawford. St. John headed home and this game is tied at one. Both offenses finally drive in a run as they try to get any form of momentum. A huge single for Castellanos. That'll bring up Lenny Ling who hits this one high. Deep into center field. That baby is gone. A two-run shot for Lenny Lane, his fifth of the playoffs, third in today's episode. And look at that. The Orioles now lead this game 3-1. to one. Baltimore only had two hits going into the inning, and now they have three consecutive hits from their three best batters and lead this one by two. So the Astros make a pitching change. Corbin Burns' day is done. Leandro Guillen will replace him. Guillen has pitched an inning and a third, has done pretty well so far as he faces off against Stadley Rutschman. 2-1 pitch. Rutschman high fly ball in the center field. Should be caught by Nemo, and it is. But a very successful inning for the Orioles. They not only get on the board, but they score three. Into the bottom of the sixth, Jose Altuve hits it into center. Nice play by Robinson. That one nearly bounced in front of his glove, but he does make the grab. Jordan Alvarez is now up. Weak grounder up the middle. Shed Lawn charging after it. The throw to first is in time. Six innings of one-run baseball for Max Meyer. I think his pitch count is low enough to justify keeping him in for another inning. We'll see what the Orioles choose to do. Christian Robinson with two away here in the seventh. Grounds that one into center field for his second base hit of the game. I think the Orioles made a smart choice by adding Robinson to the playoff roster going into this ALCS because he's played pretty well. And today he's two for three. The following batter, Carmen Sixto, who just checked in as a pinch hitter, checks his swing. So the Orioles do not score anybody as we go to the bottom of the seventh. Max Meyer will remain in the game. As with one away, it'll be Kyle Tucker up to bat. Tucker hits this one high and pretty deep in a right field. Castellanos unable to get to it. Late dive. Robinson's just standing there. What the hell are they doing? Tucker rounding third, headed home. The throw from the cutoff man. It's going to be close. And they got him out. A big-brained play in right field by Robinson and Castellanos to get him out. A very close play at home play by mere centimeters. They rule him out. We got to look at this play again. I mean, seriously, what were these horns-woggling hooligans doing? I guess they were going at their best chance to get Kyle Tucker out, and it clearly worked. A very close play at the plate, as that'll bring up Austin Wells, who singles it into center field. For what it's worth, if that last play had just been a normal double by Kyle Tucker, a run would have scored. So Nick Castellanos and Christian Robinson, for being hooligans, are the reason why it's 3-1 instead of 3-2. Corey Lee grounds out to second, and that'll end a wild seventh inning. The Orioles are lucky to be still up by two runs. That has to be the weirdest sequence I've ever seen. Andre Scrub checks in in the eighth inning. Scrub really does not live up to his name. He's actually been pretty good in the postseason with a zero ERA through three innings. Two away for Castellanos. Had a big hit in the sixth, and he strikes out. A filthy 12-6 curve by Scrub. The Orioles have only scored in one inning today, which was the sixth. Three to one going into the bottom of the eighth. The Orioles will send Will Brooks into the game. 
Brooks has enough stamina to go two innings. Assuming this inning goes pretty well, I would imagine he is probably taken out, though, for Edwin Diaz. But we'll see what Will Brooks can do here as he starts off with Jeff McNeil. Goes down on the slider. Well, lefty on lefty crime there, and it's Brooks who gets the upper hand as Max Meyer watches in the dugout after another dominant playoff performance. J.P. Crawford now with one away. Hits it high and pretty deep into right field. It will drop. Christian Robinson does not go to it, so he doesn't do anything stupid. Not that it would have really mattered because it's a ground rule double anyway. Two outs for Nemo. Lions hit into right. Castellanos does not make the play. So that will score a run. The throw to second is in time. They got him. Nick Castellanos throws another batter out. The Astros do score a run there, though, as it is 3-2 going into the top of the ninth. Ryan Stanek is in for his first postseason appearance. Was solid in 91 innings in a regular season with an ERA barely above four. Lenny Lane with nobody out, singles it into left center. You can make an argument that the Orioles should have put in a pinch runner as Lenny Lane does have three speed, but Baltimore decided to keep him in. There are nobody out. We'll see if the Orioles regret that. Adley Rochman singles it into left. Still nobody out, by the way. The Orioles are winning, but I think they would like to be winning by more in order to put themselves in a more comfortable position. That'll bring up Shed Long. The 2-2 pitch watches it fly by. A beautiful inside 96-mile-an-hour fastball to get him looking. That'll bring up Christian Robinson. Runners on the corners. Two away. Count is full. This one is lined into right. Will it be caught? Yes, it is. So despite getting a couple base runners, the Astros do get the stop. And we go into the bottom of the ninth. Only a one-run game. This one is far from over. It'll be Edwin Diaz in for his second save opportunity of the playoffs. Diaz is one for one. In two and a thirds innings, he is not allowed to run. But that's not a good start. Jordan Alvarez leads the inning off with a single into right field. So the tie-in run is aboard with nobody out. The Astros would make a substitution. Alvarez checks out for one of their speedier base runners in Miles Straw, who has high 80s speed. Alex Bregman strikes out on the slider. A huge play for Edwin Diaz to get the out. Kyle Tucker now with one away. Grounds it to third. Five, four, three. Double play. That's your ball game. The Orioles win it by the final score of three to two to tie the series at two. What a weird game. But hey, at the end of the day, a win is a win. So both teams split in today's episode. And this series is now tied up at two with three innings to go. Unlike the NLCS, this one's going to have drama and fireworks. Looking at the box score, another offensive struggle. Both lineups have continued to play poorly in the postseason. We only scored in one inning. Other than that sixth inning, we were a disaster, but our pitching was great. The Astros' pitching was great, too. Although Corbin Burns got the loss, he was great through five innings. Just kind of let it slip away from him in the sixth. So that will bring us to games five and six in the next episode. Game five in Houston, game six in Baltimore. Will somebody clinch a World Series bid or are we going to seven? Let me know what you think in the comments below. Hope everybody enjoyed today's episode. Make sure to hit the like button. Make sure to subscribe to the channel if you are new. Peace out.